Hello, I'm called Jingo Nelly and I'm going to be taking you through the third part of time value of money. And before I begin, I'm going to require you to subscribe, like and leave a comment probably after this video. So with the time value of money, I'm going to begin with multi period compounding. Uh, what does multi period compounding mean? There are circumstances, or oh, these are circumstances, where or when interest on savings or investments is compounded more than once during the year so compounding can occur quarterly whereby m will be equal to four by annually or semi-annually whereby by m to m will be equal to two weekly uh, when it is equal to 52 then monthly it will be equal to 12 daily it will be equal to 365 days or 366 days then hourly it will be equal to 8760 hours or 8784 hours depending on the days you are being given if you are being given three, 365 days you multiply it by the 24 to get this you are being given 366 days you multiply it by the 24 to get this then basing from that if at all you want to find the future value uh, when you are being given also being subjected to multi period compounding what you are going to do you are going to say uh, future value is equal to PV brackets 1 plus R divided by M uh, to the power N times N. Then uh, after knowing that your FV is, is going to be the future value compounded M times in a period and your M is going to be the number of times interest is compounded in a year. So when I want to find, uh, moving on, finding compound, compound interest when interest is compounded semi-annually. Now with this, from uh, F is equal to PV brackets 1 plus R divided by M to the power N times M. It can be this or I can decide to use A is equal to P brackets 1 plus R divided by M brackets N brackets to the power N times M. Then I'll, uh, 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 I'll need to find my compound interest which will be C, CI is equal to A minus P. Now with this from this formula, the A is the amount, P is the principal or present value, then the R is the rate of interest, M is the number of M is the number of times interest is compounded in a year, then N is the number of years, then CI is the compound interest. And I can even uh, if I told I've used this formula, I can just say compound compound interest is equal to FV minus PV. So moving on to example one, using the formula of FV is equal to PV brackets one plus R divided by M uh, brackets to the power N times M. I'm going to say I've only carried uh, extracted out the vital information from a particular question whereby uh, PV is 1M, R is 88%, then M is 2, which is uh, brackets also say we can, we can, it was semi annually, meaning but that it was compounded twice in a year and they were four years. So after getting that, I just substituted from this formula. I say uh, PV 1M. Then uh, R 0 0.08, 0 .08, whereby I say 8 divided by 100 to get this, then divide by the 2, then uh, brackets to the power 4 times 2. Then uh, after that, I substitute in, in, I substitute in, I first divide this to get the answer of, uh, to, to get the answer of, uh, to, I first substitute this, and then I add it to this to get this answer, which is 1.04 brackets to the power 8. Then after that, my 1 million times 1.37. So after me multiplying this, I'm going to uh, get the answer of 1,370,000. So if I were told I want to find compound interest, I'm going to say future value minus PV. Then I say this, the future value minus the PV. So my compound interest is going to be 370,000. So therefore, my compound interest will be this. So moving on, uh, the element of multi-period compounding brings in another concept which is known as the effective interest rate or what is known as the effective annual interest rate. So looking at it, the multi-period compound, com multi compounding brings in the concept of the effective interest rate uh, when interests are compounded more than once a year. The eventual interest rate, that, that is the E, IR is normally higher than the nominal rate and this is what is called the effective interest rate. Now, for effective interest rate, you are going to use this formula always. 
uh, brackets 1 plus r divided by m brackets n times m minus 1 whereby n is the number of years m is the number of uh, times in uh, the number of times interest is compounded in a period and r is the nominal interest per year so from that i'm having my example here where i'm going to say crane bank is offering a 16 percent interest on fixed deposit and compounds it and compounds interest every quarter every quarter of the year assuming bob deposited uh, uganda shillings 5 million today determine the effective annual interest rate offered by the bank so basing from my formula this of uh, effective interest rate i'm going to first uh, get out extract out the vital information because uh for i realized that uh, there's a there's some misleading information which i should not uh put in my formula i'm just going to extract out information that i need for this formula only so with this i'm going to say uh, what is my my what was my rate my rate was 16 percent so 16 divided by 100 which is going to give me this so after knowing that I get to I get to also get to know how, how many times was it compounded four times which is the quarter of the, of the year so after getting having all that information that means that after getting that information out from this question I can now solve and get my uh, effective interest rate so it will be equal to one plus the zero point one six uh, divided by four brackets one since I was having a single year or one year times four minus one so 1 plus 0 point, uh, uh, 0.04 brackets 4 minus 1 from this then it I, it makes me land to this which is 1.04 brackets to the power 4 minus 1 so my EIR is equal to 1.717 then minus 1 then EIR is equal to 0 0.17 therefore my EIR is equal to 17 percent so this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, of uh, so meaning that it shifted from 16% to 17%, and uh, meaning that this will be my nominal rate, and this will be my uh, effective interest rate. Meaning that I can now look at this way by saying when interest are compounded more than once a year, the eventual interest rate of EIRR is normally higher than the nominal rate and this is what is called the effective interest rate and this has been proven with this so thank you so much for watching with this question you can try out to find the future va the future value and uh, also yeah future value of maybe you give yourself uh, maybe two years four years and so on so we shall be ending there for today make sure you subscribe you like and uh, so that you can be able to get access to other videos. Thank you so much for watching.